attention, we're going to do uh, Tropico. Top, yay, Tropical Tropicals. Uh, first thing to know about Tropicals is they don't like to be put in the cooler. They will burn. They like cool Hawaiian nights, not cold Chicago mornings. So don't store these in those coolers or they'll turn brown. Uh, tropicals come from uh, Hawaii. They come from Thailand, um, most of them. Um, there's basically five I use. Orchid, Dendrobium, or Cymbidium, uh, Protea, Birds of Paradise, Torch Ginger, and a Green Anthuria. I'll find one. A green, oh, here it is. Right here, right in front of me. A Green Anthurium. Those are the basic five tropicals you only need to know. And Ethereum, I'll do it again. Oh, Heliconia. Looks like an upside down bird of paradise. Bird of paradise. Torch ginger, protea, and an orchid. Memorize those. That's all you need to know. This is 90% of your tropical work. First of all, your birds. How do you open a bird? It's like shoeing a horse. You put the step and hold it between your knees. You go halfway down the bird's beak, you split the sides, and you drive your nails, which I don't have, down the side of the calyx. That's the part. Oh, look at this. Come and get a close-up of that, Jacob. Right there, your nails, and then you drive it up, and then you fan this open. That's how you open a bird. Do you see that? And then if you want more color, you take out some of these. They're called sheets. So, let's see, my other bird, this one could be opened a little bit, it's like shoeing a horse, ever shoe a horse, Anthony? <laughs> Neither have I, but I've helped many times. <laughs> halfway down the bird's beak, it's not up here, it's halfway down, you peel back those calyx, I can get it, you girls will have an easier time, you drive your nails down, they reach underneath and you pop it up, and then you fan it open. That's how you open a bird. So, what are tropicals used for? Hotels, uh, funerals for men, parties, gallery openings. Ho every hotel in Miami, they love their tropicals. Uh, a lot of hotels in New York. Uh, parties, events, weddings, if you're getting married in the Caribbean. Uh, when I first started doing these, I hated them. Why? Because it takes, it, I used to have need a lot of pieces of a lot of flower stems to make a beautiful ball for bridal. In most tropicals, you get eight to ten stems to complete a design. It's like a Picasso painting with five slashes selling for six million dollars, as opposed to a Monet or a Matisse where they had a thousand dabbles of paint. This is the contemporary brush strokes. You get six, look at I have eight moves to make a complete flower arrangement. I couldn't do it. I'm like, I need more flowers. So that's difficult. Another thing is you never put, you never cluster them together and zone them, unless you're doing, no, everybody out there is like going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you're doing contemporary tropical design, which is another class. This is just tropical, traditional, we'll call it traditional tropical. So, you don't squeeze them together, they're too expensive. These are $9 a piece. Why are you going to group them together? You want, 90% of all tropicals are big and showy. They don't order little compact tropical designs. It's too expensive. And they want to, when they order, they want to be really big and showy. So here's my formula for doing tropicals. I used to say to the girl who worked across from me early in my career, I need a big one and a small one. She's like, you're going to have to learn how to make them. I'm like, never. So one day I decided to do this. I take my biggest, tallest one, which today is a torch tube. You can't go too tall or it'll look disproportionate. But we want it to be able to show it. And I drive it down the back of my phone. There is the masculine line of your design, the straight line. Got it? We're going to do a one-sided, by the way, today. So then I'll take my other. I, I don't cluster them, but I do zone them. I'll take my second one and moving forward on a slight angle, like in the jungle, survival of the fittest. Things grow together, right? Then I'll take maybe my birds of paradise. And moving forward in the foam from that back one, I'll drop in my birds. 
So I've got two birds, so I'm going to group those together. I'll start changing the direction of it. See how that one's facing forward? I'll change that one maybe back a little bit to give it a little bit of depth. And I'm, I'm almost out of flowers. I'm almost done. I have a heliconia. Where am I going to put that heliconia? Right here. I'm working my way down the mountain. Uh, I've got one, one anthurium. Where am I going to put that anthurium? Single anthurium. Oh. Uh, Another thing, you never want to bury hydro these right at the bottom. I see designers do it. No, you want, these are long stem, you want them out of space. I'm going to fly up uh, Anthurium over there. Then I'm going to use my Protea. Clean off the end as a focal point right there. I'm going to turn that one back, open it up a little bit. And the last thing I have is two orchids. Don't put these standing up. Orchids don't grow that way either. They're always arching out of your design. Ta-da. You're very kind, even though you don't like it. What's wrong with it? That's all there is. You can see the poem. Yes. Now comes the other part of this design. You have to do the landscaping, Hawaiian landscaping. So, all, all one side designer designs pretty much have a backbone behind it called the body. So I'm going to drop that leaf. It's to stop people from seeing through or wanting to look behind. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to take a tea leaf. Hold on. And we used to staple these right here. So we don't have a staple. Today I'm going to do just some floral tape to make a little loop de loop to draw attention to my focal point right there. I've got a, uh, I call it Japanese maple leaf. I'm going to use this to bring down, to do a little terracing. See how I'm terracing up to my design. So I have penthouse, upper deck, and lower deck. What else do I have? I have uh, a uh, striped contansia leaf. I just made that up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Remember I told you yesterday, if you don't know the name, you just make up a name until you find it. <laughs> this, is called, this is called tiger leaf. No, <laughs> Someday I'll see you on TV going, no, tiger leaves are used in lots of uh, What else did Jacob do? I have another oh, tiger leaf. <laughs> so I'll put my second tiger leaf there. See it? I zone, kind of group my tiger leaves together. And now, that's all I got today. But... Sometimes I use items that aren't even tropical, but feel tropical. This is calcinia. It kind of looks like it could grow up a jungle. I'm going to do a little calcinia in there. See, that works, right? A little calcinia up here. And then I tend to use lemon leaf, which is definitely not tropical, but it kind of feels tropical. So I'm going to finish off the front with a little grouping of lemon leaf to cover my foam right there. And maybe a little lemon leaf up the back just to give it some depth. And pretty soon it will be off to the Rich Carlton for that accounting, annual accounting, uh, Accounts of America meeting. This will be at the sign-in table. I'm going to finish off the back with some short pieces. And then the last thing I'm going to add, let's see, looking good. The last thing I'm going to add, a little bit of moss right there would help. I don't know if there's any moss to it. But, this is definitely not tropical. 
curly willow, but it kind of looks like George of the Jungle could be swinging from it. So I'm going to give it some. Now you won't believe anytime I name something from now on, you're like, he made that up. <laughs> I'm going to put a little curly willow to give it some motion. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's the difference between an average designer and a really great designer. You know, to give it a little motion. I'll take another piece. I'll make another loop de loo. And take a little more floral tape. Wrap it up. It's right on the table there. Then, before you send it out to the Ritz Carlton, you're going to zap the greenery, even the stem, not the flower, with the bleach shine, get a little spit shine. And there it is, all set for the opening at the Kalani Great Resort on Maui. Um, there you have it. Got it? Tropicals. Now, uh, again, these are used for every hotel in Miami has one. You can do them all around, but they're usually one-sided. Uh, these will last a long time. Also, you know, I'm going to spray this with crowning glory as well, like every other flower. Uh, this will last you for weeks. Uh, we can do these days ahead of your event as well. You can do like long, low ones for the tables, maybe. Uh, this retails for about one, we'll, we'll count, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. The average is about three dollars a stem. So the pot, that's thirty, plus the pot is five, that's thirty-five. The greens are about, it's not a lot, five, that's forty, times three is what? hundred and twenty, plus your labor, twenty bucks. Reasonable labor, hundred and forty dollars for this piece. They're not cheap. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, about $120, $130. No, $140. Uh, and again, men, a lot of times we sell these, send these out for men. They say, no, you love it. Uh, for men, for their funerals. Another option. Any questions? And don't forget, don't put them in a cooler. Then I go back, and before I send it out, I make sure these are in there. I shove everything down and hinge. You don't put it in a cooler, no. You, they, it, when we go on our tour of the flower markets here at the LA Flower School, you'll see that they have separate coolers for their tropicals, and they're kept at like 55 degrees. So if you have a cool room or an air conditioner, throw them in that room. Do not put them in a cooler. Orchids will burn in like a day, and these other flowers will burn in about 48 hours. So keep them on the, like a cool Hawaiian mountain side where they grow. They also grow here, like everywhere. I'll tell you my, my bird of paradise story, okay? It's a good one. I was 19, coming to LA to visit somebody, a girl that I knew in Milwaukee. And I got, I took the, the bus here, or the train, I don't, remember, I don't think I could afford the train, it must have been a bus, three days on a bus. And I got off at your, no, it was Union Station, so a train. And in the middle of the boulevard was a bunch of bushes. Oh my God, that's the most exotic, beautiful flower that must be the special island of LA. So I went out in the middle of the boulevard and I'm in the bushes going like this. They're really hard to get out of the ground. And all you saw was the top of the bush wiggling. And I ripped three of them off to take to see this girl. And I all, on the way the bus to, I should have outside um, Paramount Studios, wherever that is. And also I see them everywhere. And I got to the door, I knocked her up the door, she said, oh, look at those. I said, yeah, I figured it out on the bus right here. They're everywhere, I didn't know. I was fighting in the middle of the boulevard back and forth, trying to get, I was cheap, I had no money, so I tried to bring uh, flowers. It didn't work. Anyway, in Wisconsin, they're still considered exotic. When I started the business years ago, these were really exotic, but now with more travel to Hawaii, 
but they still act and sing. And uh, um, very popular, as always. All right? Ready, set, go, reach underneath your tables and start designing. <laughs>